and welcome to a new 3D equalizer for tutorial. This time I will show you how to solve a project with the zooming sequence. At first, we need to import a shot. We're going to use shot move zoom in this tutorial. Alright, import. Import buffer compression file. In this shot, the camera moves on the dolly from right to left while zooming out. Reconstructing the zooming will be the main part of this tutorial. So, let's begin with tracking some features. 3DE needs at least 6 points to solve a zooming project, but since there are plenty of features available, we will track 8 markers. Best places are the monitor, the table, as well as the wall. Since we are only going to track markers, the tracking mode can be set to marker. To set this as default for every point we will create, let's set this within point defaults. Perfect, let's start tracking. Very good, all points are tracked throughout the scene, so we can move on to calculate the shot zoom curve. Let's open the curve editor. And select focal length zoom. Since nothing was modified yet, the zoom curve is 30mm throughout the entire shot. Due to the zooming, the focal length changes, therefore, is dynamic. So, within the Attribute Editor's Camera tab, focal length has to be set to Dynamic Zooming. In this case, we have knowledge about the lens film back size. Let's modify film back height to 1.48 cm. Okay, everything is prepared. Let's open the Calculate Zoom Curve window. Let's click on Calc. Zoom curve, calculate zoom curve. As we can see, this window contains a lot of stuff to give you mighty features for calculating a zoom curve. Let's have a quick overview about the things we find here. On the left side are options and parameters we will use intensively throughout this tutorial, like setting the mode of operation and defining the precision and complexity of the calculation process. These text fields below let us set ranges, giving the solver hints to find the best zoom curve, as well as the chance to speed up the calculation process. Adjust parameters simultaneously allows the solver to adjust dynamic focal length and static lens parameters, like lens distortion, simultaneously. This feature will be demonstrated in detail later. The big text field below this toggle button is a part of this feature as well. Button Start Calculation starts the calculation process, as well as stopping it. On the right side you find two grids for displaying zoom curve and deviation curve while calculating. Last, after calculating the zoom curve, buttons Use Zoom Curve and Cancel either copy the calculated zoom curve to the curve editor or discard the results. Ok, now we're going to start with calculating the zoom curve. In order to be able to give the solver some hints, let's have a closer look on parameters Curve Shape and CV Range. Curve shape defines whether the camera and the shot zoomed in, or out, or even both, and speeds up the calculation process by preventing the solver from trying all different types of zooming. Setting a CV range helps the solver finding the correct beginning and ending of the zoom curve, if the zooming action in the shot does not start in the first frame and end in the last one. So, let's close this window to examine the shot for these two things. The camera zooms out throughout the scene, therefore focal length changes from a higher value to a lower. As we saw, the zooming action indeed does not start in the first frame and end in the last one. So let's check the range. Let's modify the handles to have a closer look at the beginning. 
It seems zooming begins around frame 30. Now let's have a closer look at the end. It seems it ends around frame 110. Keep this in mind and open again Calculate Zoom Curve window. Okay, let's set up the calculation process. Since we have no data about the zoom curve, mode of operation should be set to calc all from scratch. If you have data, such as the rough knowledge about the millimeter range for setting CVs manually, or even a pre-existing curve, fine-tuning existing curve would be our choice. But in this case, we have to start from scratch. After examining the shot, we do know the focal length decreases, so curve shape is ramped down. Number of CVs and scanning density allows to increase the precision of the calculation. But since we just want to get a rough curve in this step, they can be left untouched. Please note that these three parameters are just used when calculating from scratch. As we remember, zooming starts around frame 30 and ends around frame 110. Let's add some margin and set the range to 10 to 40 and 100 to 130. That's all we need for now, so let's click on button start calculation. According to the defined parameter, a zoom curve will be calculated from scratch. Both grids on the right show the current status of the calculation process. The orange zoom curve generating the best deviation at the moment is displayed in the upper grid. The associated green deviation curve is displayed in the lower grid. Whenever a zoom curve is found which decreases the deviation even more, both grids will be updated. The found zoom curve as well as the deviation look good enough for a first rough calculation. In most cases, a useful curve might be found after approximately 10% of the progress. So we can move on to the second part of the calculation process, the fine tuning pass. Let's click on this button again to, as the label indicates, move on to fine tuning pass. Now, the fine-tuning pass continues calculating the zoom curve, but not from scratch, rather than modifying the existing curve found in the previous step. As we see, the grey curve moves just around the orange zoom curve. All current calculations are based on the existing curve. Due to the focus on the existing curve, as well as to the increased number of CVs, 2 CVs in the previous, 5 CVs in the current step, the deviation will be improved further. With the current settings, this deviation looks already pretty good, so we can finish the fine-tuning. Button Use Zoom Curve transfers the found curve to the curve editor. Let's do this and have a look on the zoom curve. Curve shape is as expected ramped down and starts ends within the range we previously defined. The course of the curve is really smooth, which does not seem very correct. Let's have a look at the shot again. We see, zooming is pretty rough and noisy instead of smooth throughout the shot. Therefore, this smooth zoom curve is not matching with the characteristics of the shot. Especially at the beginning, we can see a bump in the zooming, which wasn't calculated properly. Modifying the parameters and giving the solver some hints to calculate more precisely should fix this. Setting the focal length range might be one hint, so let's have a look at it. The currently calculated range is approximately between 45 and 35 millimeters. Let's keep this in mind and reopen Calculate Zoom Curve window. Since we're now having an existing curve which we like to modify, mode of operation should be set to fine-tuning existing curve.
We kept in mind the calculated range is between 45 and 35 millimeters. So let's add some margin to get a range of 40 to 50 millimeters at start, 35 to 45 millimeters in between, and 30 to 40 millimeters at the end. This range is also displayed in the upper grid by these blue curves. As we saw, zooming in the shot isn't very smooth, it's way more complex, especially at the beginning. This peak in the deviation curve indicates that there is something not correct. To give the solver more opportunities to calculate the complexity of the zoom curve more precisely, increasing the complexity parameter might be helpful. So, let's double it to 10. Well, this might result in a longer time to calculate, but gives the solver a high chance to find the best zoom curve. Everything's done, so let's start the calculation again. The following calculation processes in this video from now on are speeded up a bit to keep the video length short. So, depending on your hardware, this might take a bit longer on your computer than it is shown in this video. Since we set the perimeter range, the solver just uses the area within the blue curves to find the best zoom curve. This might have very much to improve zoom curve and deviation dramatically. Okay, we can finish the fine tuning at this point. The zoom curve is noisier than before, the deviation was reduced pretty much, and the peaks within the deviation curve are smaller. But they are not gone, so there's still much room for improvements. Our first option to improve the zoom curve is activating Enhanced Calculation. This feature allows the solver to move CVs horizontally to provide a high degree of freedom while calculating the zoom curve. Therefore, extremely noisy parts can be considered with a high density of CVs, whereas very smooth parts can be solved with fewer CVs. Since we have enough time, let's give the solver the highest complexity. The last option we can modify is the smoothing parameter. As we saw, zooming in this shot is very noisy, therefore not really smooth. Setting this parameter to 1 prevents the solver from unnecessarily smoothing the zoom curve. Alright, let's give the calculation another try. Here we go! With these enhanced settings, it is recommended to give the calculation process enough time to find the ideal deviation curve, which is a noisy curve around the flat line. Well, waiting isn't very interesting, so time for coffee. Okay, let's see how is it going. Looks pretty good already. The peaks are getting smaller and the deviation is quite low. But it's not good enough yet. Alright, zoom curve is as noisy as expected. Deviation curve looks great now. No peaks, small deviation, my coffee mug is empty. I think we can finish the fine tuning at this point. Use zoom curve to transfer the results to the curve editor. As we see, Zoom curve changed a lot since the calculation from scratch and definitely looks more similar to the zooming in the shot than before. Let's calc the project to actually see if our zoom curve works for the shot. Camera path and three point position seem to be reconstructed correctly so far. The project's deviation is, as expected, pretty good. To verify this result, placing a 3D model in the shot is a good option. Here, we like to place a cube on the table best place would be on point 4. So let's select point 4 and switch to 3D orientation controls. With the point still selected, create a cube. Add it to the selection and snap it to the selected point. A little modification so it fits into the shot. Overview controls. Here we go. A cube stands on the table. Let's play back. As we can see, the camera was reconstructed correctly. The cube gets smaller towards the end and stands perfectly on the table. Okay, these were basically the techniques to solve a shot with dynamic focal length. We started from scratch with default settings then modified parameters by defining a more precise range, 
and increasing complexity after analyzing the shot, as well as activating enhanced mode to reconstruct this noisy zoom curve. Everything looks pretty good, but there's one option left which might improve the deviation even more, lens distortion. Depending on the lens, adding lens distortion to the calculation process might have a huge effect on the results. I indicated previously that it is possible to calculate dynamic focal length and static lens parameters like lens distortion simultaneously. This is what we'll do next. In the attribute editor's lens tab, let's click on toggle button adjust beside distortion to make this parameter available for the calculation process. If you like, other parameters here can be set to adjust as well, but not all will be used for calculating the zoom curve. Which parameters are actually being used during calculation can be seen within the parameter adjustment window. So let's open it. Every parameter listed here in which are activated will be later taken into account. Lens parameters are active by default, so you don't have to look them up here every time. Activating adjust in the attribute editor is sufficient. But looking up to be on the safe side isn't wrong either. Further, one distortion parameter will be good enough for this lens, so let's deactivate the other. So let's close this window and reopen calculate zoom curve window. Now, when activating adjust static parameters simultaneously, the solver takes all these parameters into account we previously set. Start calculation. The output text field now displays lens distortion generating the best deviation. This result seems to be pretty good already, but I think there's room for more. Yeah, this looks perfect. So we can finish the fine tuning. The deviation curve didn't improve dramatically compared to previous results, but the deviation value did change a bit. High peaks are gone completely, so we're now having our ideal noisy curve around the flat line, as well as a really good deviation. Of course, this feature has a bigger or smaller effect on the deviation depending on the lens distortion values. In some cases, it can help you really a lot. For the last step, let's calculate the project again and play back to view the solve chart. It looks really good. The cube stands perfectly on the table. Everything was reconstructed correctly. Well, that's all. We successfully solved the zooming project with the calculate zoom curve window. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks a lot for watching.